You have bijective, bijective. Don't forget the, the first one is injective. Type of mapping, you have injective. Second one is subjective. The third one is bijective. And I told you the first one, injective, is one to one. We are by the elements in the domain are uniquely paired with the elements in co-domain. That means one for one, unique, one for one. One in the domain cannot go for two in co-domain, no. But in that is injective. Why subjective is one to whereby for, for, for a mapping diagram to be subjective, that means all the elements in co-domain must also be range or image. That means there must not be element left out without being paired with in the domain. That is our subjective. But here, when you get the word bijective, a mapping that is both injective and subjective is bijective. A mapping that is both injective and subjective is bijective. What I mean? If you look at this uh, mapping diagram, let's think so, you know, each element are uniquely paired with. If each element are uniquely paired with, I can actually refer this one as um, injective. And I can also refer this one as subjective. Why can I refer it to as subjective? Because all the elements in codomain here, they are also referred to as range or image. All of them in codomain here. In codomain. This is domain. If you look at them, domain and co-domain. So all the elements in co-domain, they are also referred to as image or range. So that means this diagram can also refer to as what? As subjective. This mapping diagram can be referred to as both injective and subjective. I hope you do you understand. Why do I call it injective? Because they are uniquely paired one to one. So it is injective. It is also called subjective because, because the, the, all the elements in code domain here, they are also referred to as image or range. That's how we call it bijective. So this diagram can also be called injective and also be called subjective. And we can now call it bijective. Now, if you look at this number four types of mapping diagram, this one is called mapping. identity mapping. Identity mapping. I will say identity mapping. Anytime you say a diagram, you have the domain and co-domain, the elements in domain and the elements in co-domain, they are the same thing. We call it identity mapping. So if you look at the, the elements in domain and the elements in co-domain here, they are the same thing. So we refer to this one as identity mapping. Identity mapping. You know, when you have something like this, you cannot call this one identity. Let's say you have ABC in domain, we have one, two, three. So this kind of diagram is not identity. It's not identity. Well, because the elements in domain they are different from elements in codomain. So we cannot call this one identity. But in a situation whereby the elements in domain are the same thing as elements in codomain, we call them identity mapping. Identity mapping. Now let's there is what we call there is what we call constant mapping. Constant, constant mapping. And when you have the domain, it's our domain, our co-domain, In a situation whereby we have all the elements in domain, all of them pair with one in co-domain, we call it constant mapping. Constant mapping. As a situation whereby all the elements in domain pair with one in co-domain, we call that one constant mapping. Constant mapping. All of these are types of mapping diagrams <clears throat> now the, the, another type of mapping is composition of mapping composition of mapping whereby we, are, we can they will give us two two mappings to compose it as one in the form of diagram that's what you see now if you look at this one f functions such as s is in relation to t this is one diagram 
So this is another G such that C is our relation to U. So I'm composing them to get. Now if you look at these two, there's something the same. That is T T. That is T T is the same. So the, the, the ones that are different is X and U. That's why I compose them. And I pick H to compose them. So you can represent the form of diagram. How do we represent it? We started with X. S is relation to T. I guess now. And T is in relation to U. X is relation to T. As a line of diagram. And T is relation to U. I guess now. And I just use the H to cover them up. That's what you see. So this kind of diagram is for compositions of mapping. It's composition of mapping. So let's take like two questions, past questions under this before we go to the value of a function.